Hi, and thank you for watching. What does the Abrahamic Accords coin have to do with this mural that is displayed in the Denver airport? The answer is that both form part of predictive programming in which those who currently rule this world share their plans openly before they are carried out. Both of these feature a dove positioned at the tip of a sword, which forms part of a timeline in both cases. This timeline involves the establishment of a new world order that will come about after World War III destroys most of what we have today. If you look at what is happening in the world right now, you will see how many nations are currently preparing for this war and also getting their nuclear weapons ready for what will soon follow. This war has been part of our enemy's plan since 1871, where the intent of those who have been working behind the scenes to bring this about was recorded in a letter between Albert Pike and his colleague Giuseppe Mazzini. Just as described in this letter, we are seeing how Islam and political Zionists are now rising against each other, intending to bring about mutual destruction of both sides during this war. The enemy also used the famous iPetco 2 animation to share more information about this war and once again we have the imagery of a dove positioned at the tip of something sharp when this war breaks out. In this animation, this event is also connected to a specific date, and this occurring on a blood moon or total lunar eclipse, and it just so happens that a blood moon will occur on May 26th. Given the movement of war machinery seen around the world right now, and tensions rising between several nations all at once, chances are increasing for this war to start on May 26th, just as shown, when this total lunar eclipse will mark a very special day. For more information about what makes this day so special, please watch the previous video I posted. The Abrahamic Accords coin, however, has another very interesting detail showing us a planet that has the characteristic red dot of Jupiter on it, but for some reason it is shown with a ring around it like in the case of Saturn. The only way in which Jupiter could receive a ring around it would be if some massive collision occurred with this celestial body, and the debris from this collision is caught in an orbital plane around Jupiter. If you watched my previous video, you will remember that I pointed out how an announcement would be expected when those who have been watching for the return of Jesus reached 1,335 days after the Revelation 12 sign occurred, and that this day falls on May 20th. This would mean that the imagery on the Abrahamic Accords coin represents a timeline that should be understood moving from the tip of the sword down to the handle, which is in fact a lot more sinister than when viewed in the opposite direction. As in the case of Noah, who waited for more than a century to see the promise of a worldwide flood fulfilled, Noah only knew the date on which the flood would occur seven days before it happened. The period between May 20th and May 26th is exactly seven days. And could it be that a massive impact with Jupiter will be the final sign to the world that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is coming back just seven days later to gather His people and to remove them from the earth, and possibly fulfilling the following passage. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. If a massive collision with Jupiter occurs on May 20th or around this date, you can know with relative certainty that the day that is marked by the lunar eclipse, or May 26th, following seven days later, represents the fulfillment of second Passover by the Son of God, who is the good man who went on a long journey to a far country when he ascended to heaven after his resurrection, and returns on the day that has been appointed for a person who returns from a long journey. May 26th will then be the day on which those who have been waiting for our Redeemer could meet Him in the air, and where World War III will break out immediately following this removal of God's people from the world. If all of this happens as anticipated, and I am not saying that it definitely will, we are just considering this as a possibility. We have a pattern that matches what occurred during the days of Noah. Noah did not know on which day the flood would occur, until seven days prior when God told him that it would happen in seven days' time, and Noah and his family was then locked into the ark. In the same way, should a heavenly sign occur on May 20th, it would be God's signal to those who have been watching for his return, and also representing a blessing over those who have been waiting for 1,335 days after the vision 
that is described to us in Revelation 12 was fulfilled, and we can then begin to look forward to our blessed hope that we can anticipate on May 26th. Think about this for a moment. This date has been shown to us in the iPet Goat 2 animation since 2012. How did our enemy know about this date so long ago and before the day arrived? For those who are always saying that nobody knows the day or the hour, this may come as a bit of a shock. But our enemy knew very well on what day he would be cast down to the earth because he has full access to God's timepiece in the heavens. And he knows how to interpret the signs. Are you ready for what follows as described in great detail in God's word? And will you be leaving this world or will you remain behind? Are you ready to meet the Son of God when He comes back for those who belong to Him? Do you know with certainty that you belong to Him, or is there a possibility that He could tell you to depart from Him because He never knew you? What can you do in the short time that remains to ensure that you are known by Jesus when He returns? Firstly, you have to realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and that no person on the earth can do anything to save themselves. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, who sacrificed His sinless life for us so that we could be saved. And this is a free gift given to all who would accept it through faith. You have to place 100% of your trust in Jesus' finished work on the cross, through which He shed His blood for you as payment for your sins. Jesus alone will receive all the glory and honor for every person who is saved, and will not share that glory in any way with any person. If there is anything that you would like to add to only trusting Jesus alone for your salvation, such as relying on some of the good works that you have done for the Lord, or thinking that you have been a pretty decent person who can enter into God's kingdom because you deserve it for some reason or another, be very careful because anything you add to your faith in Jesus alone when it comes to your salvation is not placed under the blood of the Lamb to be washed, and that sin remains as a debt against your name. And although you may be saved because you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus may tell you that He does not know you because you may have wanted some of the glory that belongs only to Jesus for yourself. God's Word also says that we should fear God and that if we loved Him, we would obey His commandments. So when we are saved, what attitude do we live with? Can we go back to live like we did before we were saved? Is that fearing God as we are supposed to and following His commandments as instructed? Nobody will ever be able to keep His commandments perfectly, but after we received salvation, our desire and attitude should be to live for Him and not for ourselves or for the world. When we find ourselves messing up in life and sinning, how do we treat that situation? Do we go to our Heavenly Father and tell Him that we are sorry for our failure, confessing our sins to Him that is accompanied by remorse and disappointment concerning our failure? Or do we simply continue to live in sin without a care in the world, because we have received salvation and are now set for eternity? Which of these attitudes would represent a loving relationship between us and our Heavenly Father? And which one could end up with the words, Depart from me, I never knew you? God is going to separate between the two final portions of His harvest very soon, and you do not want to become part of the gleanings that will be left behind on the earth to endure God's wrath being poured out over this world during the tribulation. Both portions representing people who believe that Jesus is the Son of God and have received salvation, but one group being known by the Lord while the other group is not. If you do not know how to apply the harvest or temple models to believers in Christ, please watch a five-part series in the description below that covers this in much detail. Time is so short and you must be right with God when He comes for His own. I will do my best to do a more detailed video covering what could possibly happen on May 20th and 26th from a biblical perspective, as there is so much information to share and so little time to put it all together in the little time that remains. Please like this video and share it with others so that more can see it and be in a position to recognize our Heavenly Father's final warning to the world before His Son returns. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, but we can definitely see the day approaching. Blessings.